I think within the within the study material on eLearn Oaks website, uh, so you can actually uh, go ahead, download it, and run it on your own. Uh, within the notebook, the data that I'm using is not provided. The data itself uh, uh, is around 250 MB, so that will be too much. Hence, I have given a, uh, the link here from which from where you can go and download this data. So if you click on the link. Uh, there will be multiple files. You have to search for this file, okay? ML, which is which stands for Movie Lens, hyphen 20 million. Okay, this 20M stands for 20 million. That is the data set I'm using so that you can follow along with me. In my case, I have already downloaded this data and I've kept it into a folder called as Movie Lens. Okay, so I'll continue with what this is. So if I do an ls command on the folder Movie Lens, basically it lists the files in that folder. I can see that there are there are one, two, three, four files: readme.txt, movies.csv, ratings.csv, and tags.csv. Okay. So CSV. Okay, okay, uh, does anyone know what CSV stands for? Okay, excellent. CSV stands for comma separated values, and what that basically means is if I open the file, let me, okay, let me see if I can show it for you. So I hope you can see my file uh, here. This is what a comma separated file, a comma separated values, a CSV file looks like. And you can see on every row, on every line, I have some piece of data and if you look at the first line, you can see movie ID, comma, title, comma, genres. So these, this data is formatted in three columns. Okay, the, head, the heading of the first column is movie ID. The comma separates it into a different column. In the next column, I have the, I have the heading as title, comma, I have the heading as genres. Okay, so this makes the heading. After that follows each row of data. In the first row, I have first movie ID as one, the title as this thing, Toy Story 1995, comma, genres. So we have all these genres, which are separated by these pipes. This is what a comma separated value or a CSV file looks like. In our agenda, what we want to do is we want to read this CSV file so that it can populate a data frame within Pandas. Okay. So earlier we saw how we can write a data frame like this. And we would we, we we wrote our own data so that we can populate. Okay. But in most data science problems, that is not how you fill data. In fact, uh, our data science problems will have data uh, anywhere from hundreds of values to thousands and millions of values. Okay, so it is impossible to write it down manually in, in the way that we did earlier. Generally, we will get data from different sources. Okay, one such source is a CSV file. You can, you can source your data from an Excel file. You can source your data from databases in SQL, or you can source your data from, from uh, cloud services. Like uh, uh, you can have your data on Amazon's S3 uh, network or Google's buckets and so on. Okay. Irrespective of where you get the data. Once you have the data, you can load it into pandas. So I'm showing you an example of comma separated values because as beginners, this is the most common way that you will be dealing with data. So here within my folder called as movie lens, I have these files. In the first case, I will try to read the movies.csv into, so this is a CSV file that I want to read into pandas. Okay. The command that I will use is something like this. We will use PD, which is the alias we gave for pandas dot read underscore CSV. So that is the name of the function to this function. We are providing one input which is a string of the location of this file. Okay. So here uh, it says that go to the folder movie lens within the folder movie lens. There is a file called as movie CSV. Okay. So that is the location of this file. So when I write this command and I execute this, what pandas will do is it will go to the CSV. It will read that CSV. It will convert that into a data frame and return the data frame into this variable movies. Okay. So now when I print, the type of movies, I can see that it is a data frame object. Okay. 
once it is a data frame object, we can do multiple things with it. Okay. One of the things we can do is we can print the, we can print some of the values of the, uh, of the data set. So here movies is a data frame. If I do movies dot head and put 10 inside, what it will do is it will print the first 10 rows of this data. Okay. So what is dot CSV file? So I just explained a dot CSV file stands for comma separated values. Okay. It's basically a text file as I showed here. It's basically a text file where each row represents each line represents one row of data. Okay. And they are separated using commas. Okay. So let me execute this first one. So when I execute this first one, you can see that now I have uh, this neatly formatted text. I have three columns. The names of the columns are movie ID, title and genres. I have multiple rows. In fact, I am just printing the first 10 rows as given here. But I will show you very quickly how we can find out how many rows are there and what all data is present. If you look at the data, movie ID is just a number uh, giving some, some, uh, some identification to the row we are looking for. The title is name of the movie. And after the name of the movie, we have a space, we have an open parenthesis. And here we have the release date. Okay, on which year the movie was released. Uh, that is the title column. And then in the genres column, we have the different genres that that is categorical to this movie. So let's say Toy Story, we say Toy Story uh, released in 1995 is an adventure movie. It's an animation movie. It's a movie for children. It is a comedy movie. Okay, or it, it is comic in nature. And it's a fantasy movie. Okay, so these are some genres that are associated with this data. Further, if I don't put anything inside returns to us, the first five values or, or the first five rows. Okay, so that is how we can access data. Let us see some more things. Uh, we also saw earlier within our class when we are dealing with data frames, we can access the row using the I lock command. Okay, so movies dot I lock. Okay. Sorry, I had a power failure and uh, the way things are set up at my home, uh, I have an inverter, but it does not automatically switch. So as soon as there is a power fluctuation, my Wi-Fi turns off and I get, I get disconnected from the call. Okay. Uh, just give me a few seconds. I'll resume again. Okay. Okay. So I, I was talking about pandas and we talking up, we, we looked at how to access a particular row. So here, uh, doing movies dot I lock rows 257, we are able to extract, we are able to go to row number 257 and extract the series object. Okay. Let's go ahead. So within, if you remember within our, uh, within our folder, we had three files. We loaded one as movies dot CSV. We have two more remaining ratings dot CSV and tags dot CSV. So let's go ahead and load these up. So, I have reached here. So now same as we read movies.csv, we can load tags.csv. And additionally, you know, sometimes uh, the CSV file, even though it is stated as CSV, comma separated values, sometimes the delimiter, that is the, the character that is separating the different values, the different columns together, that delimiter can be a semicolon, it can be a hyphen, it can be a tab, depending upon where that you're getting the data from. In those cases, you can actually tell pandas what is the specific separator. In my case, since it is already a comma, I'm just uh, defining comma. Even if you don't define comma, the default value for the separator is comma. Okay. So uh, I just wanted to show this. If you have a different separator, you can write this. So let's say if you have a semicolon as separator, you can put semicolon here and that will tell pandas that semicolon is your separator. Okay. In my case, I'll keep it as hyphen and I will execute this. So now we will read the tags file that pandas reads the tag CSV file, converts that into a data frame and loads that up into this variable called tags. And when you do tags.head, we can see the first five values of this column. So just uh, a, a look at these columns tells us that we have four uh, columns, one as user ID, one as movie ID, then we have a tag called uh, different people have given different tags and we've got a timestamp. 
what okay let me also load the ratings the csv and then we can try to explain what this data is okay additionally i can take pd dot uh, read csv for ratings define the separator and i can also say that one once i know my data in this case i know that there is a column called as timestamp and uh, this is actually so this uh, this uh, long looking number is is a representation of the date uh, year and time at which this data was collected okay so we'll talk about timestamps in in the later part of this of this notebook right now i just i just load this file as well so out of the three files rating.csv is the biggest file so it takes some time to load in the meantime that it is loading let us explore what these columns are or let us based on the data that we have let us try to guess how this data would have been collected okay so when you look at the tags column and also additionally the ratings column you can see there is a user id there is a movie id and here there is a tag and a timestamp and here there is a there is a ratings and a timestamp so what would have happened is user id 3 comes to this website and on this website it looks at the movie 260 and for the movie 260 it says that the tag is classic so it's a classic movie and it he records or he or she records this data at this date and time okay i'll explain how to extract this date and time from this later on okay the same guy the same uh, user says that the movie id 260 is also a sci-fi movie okay and this was recorded at this time user 4 uh, writes uh, tags or puts tags for multiple of other movies so it says for the movie id 1732 it is a dark comedy so it says it and he assigns that he or she assigns the tag as dark comedy at this date and time for the same movie it says great dialogue and this so basically this is a this is a website data which is recording users opinions on movies okay and the tags file gives us what is the tags that the user has given once we have this information if you look at this case uh, the movies this is an accumulated data that is if i have many people saying that toy story has is has the tag adventure then i will actually assign the tag adventure to this movie if many people say that it has a tag animation then we will assign animation to this movie okay so we are automatically or what we are doing is we are generating tags for a movie based on what users are giving and then based on their popularity how popularly people are putting the same tags based on that we will assign tags so that is what has already happened within the movies data similarly when you look at the ratings data so different users are rating different movies by giving it some values okay and we have which user rated which movie what is the rating they give and what time they give okay. so this is the data that we have okay these are the three data points uh, the three csv files we have movie csv rating csv and tag csv so let me again tell you uh, we are not Uh, doing an in-depth understanding of this data, we are only using this data as a reference point so that we can we can learn about pandas more. Okay, had this been a proper data science, uh, it's basically a measure of the the spread or the distribution of the data. So we get that idea. Then we see what is the minimum value. So it says the minimum value within this data is five point all these numbers. So we can ignore all of this. So five e minus one. Okay. Do you know what this stands for? Phi e minus one. Can you put that in the chat window? Okay. So maybe in maybe in simple terms that everyone can understand, what is phi e minus one? okay let, let me let me tell you then so 5e minus 1 basically means 5 into 10 raised to minus 1 so 10 raised to minus 1 is basically 1 by 10 and 5 by 10 gives me the value of 0.5 okay so this is a very fancy way a scientific way of telling that the minimum value is 0.5 okay 
So for, for our purposes, especially within Python and languages like uh, MATLAB and so on, they use the character E to represent 10 raised to something. This is not 2.47 raised to something, okay? So this just says 5 into 10 raised to minus 1, 0.5, okay? That is the minimum value, okay? Then we have three numbers, 25%, 50%, 75%, which I will explain shortly. I have a max value. So max value is 5 into E raised to 0 plus 0, okay? So that means 5. That means that this data rating is distributed between a minimum value of 0.5 and a max value of 5. Okay, that is the range of our data. Now within this range, there are three numbers, 25%, 50%, and 75%. And what these numbers are, they are basically interquartile range. Okay, they are the quartile range. So if I take all of my ratings data and I sort them in ascending order, okay, the first value will be the minimum value. Then if I go 25% ahead, so let's say if I have 1000 points, I go after sorting it in, in ascending order, if I go to row number 250, which is 25%, then what is the value that you will find? So it says, okay, if you go to 25%, you will find the value three. Okay, so that is the 25 percentile or 25% or the first quartile of our data. That is a rating of three. If you go another 25%, that is you are at the center of the data, you have a value of 3.5, okay? Further, if you go towards another 70, another 25%, that is three quarters of the data, you have the value four. And then finally, the max, the last 100% value is five. So it, this gives us an idea of how the data is distributed, okay? So ratings, uh, you write the series, you do a dot describe and you get this information, okay? Additionally, instead of doing the dot describe on one column, you could do a dot describe on the entire data frame itself. Okay. So if I take the ratings data frame and I do a dot describe and I execute this, okay, it takes a few seconds that it do its job. Okay. So when you do this, uh, it gives us the same information count, mean, standard deviation, uh, minimum value 25%, 50%, 75%, and max for all the three columns, okay? So ratings has three columns, user ID, movie ID, rating. For all three columns, we get all of this information. Now, for user ID and movie ID, since they are ID, they are serial numbers, this information is not useful for us. Okay, nonetheless, uh, this gives you an idea when you have multiple columns, especially numerical columns, and you want to get a describe. Ah, so I have not, just give me a moment, I will disable attendee annotation. And here the annotation. Okay, so now we should not have any disturbance. Right? So if, if you do it for if you do it for all uh, if you do it a dot describe on the data frame, you get all of these basic statistics for all of the columns. Okay. Now this is interesting and this is good uh, if you just want to view the data, but sometimes you would want to uh, use this number, use this number in some place, okay? In that case, we cannot take help of the dot describe function, okay? So within pandas, uh, as I said, pandas also has, is built up on numpy. You will find many numpy functions that you can use within pandas, okay? So if you take the series here, ratings, rating, and you do a dot mean, you will get the mean value for the ratings, okay? Which as we execute here, comes to 3.53385, a very long number which exactly matches to the mean we saw here and which also matches to the mean we saw here. Okay. So using the dot mean, you can just get the mean. If you do the dot mean on the entire data frame, you will get the mean for the entire data frame. So all three columns, you'll find the mean value. Similar to mean, you can do min. Min gives you the minimum value. Max gives you the maximum value. STD gives you the standard deviation. Mode gives us the most common value, okay? The most common value is 4.0. We get the most common value here. And we've got an interesting function called as the score. Does, do any of you know what the CORR stands for? Yes, you're right. This stands for correlation. And what correlation basically means is, is correlation means how the features are related with each other. 
what is the relation so rela correlations comes from the word relation and co means uh, between multiple things okay so correlation gives us what is the relation between the different features here so you can see three columns all the three columns comes as uh, all the three columns comes as columns here and the three columns are also repeated as rows here okay so when you look at this first value this says what is the correlation between user id and user id that is one that means that they are exactly the same values okay uh, let me go ahead let me see the second value the second value here minus 0.004413 says what is the correlation between user id and movie id so here if we forget what user id movie id means basically here what it says is as user id moves in the positive direction movie id will move in the negative direction because of this negative sign so they are negatively correlated okay and their correlation is very very small so this value is very close to zero basically means that they have no relation between each other if this value was something like 0.9 then we would say that as user id moves in the positive direction movie id will move in the negative direction that is they are maybe one way of saying loosely terming that we could say they are inversely proportional okay but let us not call it let us just say they have a negative weak negative correlation the third value here says we have the correlation between user id and rating so as user id moves in the positive direction rating also moves in the positive direction with a very small value so again very less correlation which totally makes sense why should rating have anything to do with the user id and movie id right so uh, just remember this function cor and once we come to a good data set which actually uh, makes some sense in that data set we will be able to find more meaning of what this correlation means okay so let us move ahead further we can do interesting things uh, like i want to know are there any movies which have a rating greater than 5 okay are there any movies which have a rating greater than 5 so i do this i take ratings column i do greater than 5 so this will return to me a boolean value for every row for every row i will get a boolean value as true or false when this condition is true that is when rating is greater than 5 i will get a true otherwise i will get a false and i i copy all of that into this variable called as filter 1 i print filter 1 so when you print filter 1 you can see here that since there are so many values right so there are uh, okay how many are this this is 100 1000 10000 lakh 10 lakh crores so this is 2 crores 50 lakhs okay so we have almost 2 crores 50 lakhs different items if i print of course i cannot see all the values right so i can see that the first five are false and the last five are false but in between do i have any true values so to know that i can use the any function you remember this was the function that we had seen within numpy okay and what this function does it it will return to us a true if any of these values are true okay if any of these values so out of the 2 2 crore 50 lakh points if any of them are true it will return to us a value of 2 otherwise it will return to us a value of false so when i executed this i can see filter 1 dot any it gives me the value of false which basically says that all these values are less than 5 less than or equal to 5 okay let me go ahead we can do the same for are all the ratings greater than 0 So in this case, yes, we know all the ratings are greater than zero by doing a filter to dot all. So the any function returns a true if any of them are true. The all function returns a true only if all the values are true. Okay. So these are neat examples of what we did in NumPy and how we can use it for this data set. Let us go ahead and let us do some basic data cleaning. Okay. Here we will not do a lot of data cleaning. we we'll just understand we are we are still trying to explore pandas okay so let me look at what are the columns we have in movies so we have the columns movie id title genres how many rows we have these many rows then we have an interesting function called as info okay so movies dot info when you do that on a data frame it gives us all this interesting information so what is this information first it tells us that this is a data frame which is good then it tells us that the index it gives us the range of index values okay so it says the index values 
there are 62,423 indexes, uh, 423 entries. This, the index starts with zero and ends at 62,422. So it's a zero based index. It also tells us there are three data columns. Uh, there are data columns and uh, a total of three columns. These are the column names, zero, one, two. These are the column names, movie ID, title, genres. It also tells us how many non-null values are there. Okay, so there are six, two, four, two, three non-null values. That is, no, none of the values are missing. Okay, we have access to all of the day, all of the values for movie ID, for title, and for genres. It also tells us the data type for each of these columns. So the data type for movie ID is int sixty four, title and genres is object. So when pandas writes object, it basically means that it, the data type is string. Okay, here it gives us a summary that there is one integer value, two object values, and it also gives us the memory usage. Okay. So it says that when this data was loaded into my RAM, it takes around one point, it takes something greater than 1.4 MBs of data. Okay, so we get all this interesting information from movies.info. Now, if I'm interested to find out, are there any missing values, then I can do some interesting things. I can call the is null function, right? So let me do that here. If I say movies.isNull, now we know there are no missing values because here within info itself, we saw this, that these many entries are there and these many values are there. So there are no missing values. Nonetheless, if you do movies dot is null and execute this, you get uh, the same size of movies and instead of the values, you get true or false. These true or false show to us uh, uh, a false represents that there is value. The data is not null and a two represent that there is a null value. But this is again, very difficult to read, right? So I can do a dot sum on this. And when I do a dot sum on the output, it adds all of the values. So if it gets a true, it will add, it will assume that to be a value of one. If it gets a false, it will assume that to be a value of zero. So after adding all the movie IDs, Boolean values, we get zero, basically saying that there are no missing values for some for movie ID title or genres. We could also do something like this. We could also do movies dot is null dot any and this dot any can tell us if there is a missing value or not. But I like the sum function because the sum function, if there are missing values, it also tells me how many missing values are there. Okay. So I think this is more useful, but depending upon the case, we could use the other one as well. So great for movies. There are no missing values. Let's go ahead. Let's check for ratings. So when we check for ratings, we find that again, for ratings, there are no missing values. Excellent. Let's look tags. So for tags, we see that user ID is false. Movie ID is false, but tag is true. That means that we have some missing values for tag. Let us find out how many missing values. So same command as before. Now I take the tags data set, do dot is null, do dot sum over this. And when I execute this, I can see that there are 16, values of tag that are missing. Okay. If I want to go and find out which are these values, which are these rows, which have these 16 missing values, then I can do a selection on tags. So I'm writing the data frame tags and within square brackets, I'm writing which column, which rows I want to select. Okay. So which rows I want to select all the rows where is null for this tag is true. So I take tags and within this tags, go for the column tag and do a dot is null on this. So wherever this is null is, uh, wherever there is a missing value, wherever there is a null value, I will get a true. And wherever I get a true, that will be the location that I will extract from these tags. Okay. So when I execute this, I can see that these are the 16 missing values that we have. Okay. 16. Yes. These are the 16 missing values that we have. And we can see that most of these missing values, they come from one user. Okay, you see, just the first user ID is 121710. Apart from that, all of these 15 values are from the same user, 141727. So my guess, my guess would be something like this, that when this user was uh, uploading the data, he may have been uploading in a different language. That is why the data set, uh, the data frame or the data collection process was not able to understand the tag. That could be reason one or while saving the file or while putting the data, uh, uh, there was maybe an internet connection, 
uh, trouble or some transfer trouble that is why the data was not populated or it could mean that that user this user actually deleted his profile from the website thereby all his tags went away but we still have the access of when he had loaded the tags so there could be multiple reasons why we don't have the why we don't have the data okay and as a data scientist it it would do as good uh, if we try and guess what is the problem okay and this will actually help us to develop an intuition of what would have happened when the data went missing and if i know what would have happened then i can find a way of populating that data so that my model does not get corrupt okay so all of this we will talk in the process of data cleaning for now let us just go ahead since i have this missing values if i have to take this data and give it to a machine learning model i will have some trouble okay so machine learning models they don't like missing values so i have to deal with the missing values before giving it to the model one way of dealing with this values is deleting it off okay that's the simplest way uh, not advised always only advised when i have loads of data in our case i will delete this case and i can delete this by using this command okay so i can use tags dot drop na and what that does is it drops the drops all the rows which have na in them na means not a number in them okay so after doing that i i take the resultant and keep it again into the tags column so let me execute this when i execute this and then i do again a tags dot is null dot any i find that all these values are false which basically means that after deleting the missing values now there are no null values within my data set okay and if we check the shape now we see that these are the number of rows we have so let us compare with the number of rows we had before so before we had this 1093360 just notice the last number 60 from 60 when we remove 14 we end up with 44 okay so we have 1093344 so now that we don't have any missing values uh, the way we did that was by deleting the missing values rows so great uh, we have 10 more minutes uh, what i would want to do in the remaining 10 minutes is not go ahead with pandas but to solve uh, some of the assignment questions uh, that is uploaded on the website okay we will from tomorrow we will again continue with data visualization okay so if you go to the website there will be some assignments let me show you one of the assignments so this is for data structures i will randomly choose one pro one problem and try to explain how this works out. or randomly choose a few problems and try to explain how they work out uh yes so okay or i can take questions also so one of the questions you are asking is how could we replace null values with different values so there are ways for doing that within pandas we have the fill na function so if you could just wait uh, uh we will cover that once we finished our packages and we uh, the, after we finish our packages uh we will be talking about something called as uh data pre processing and within data pre processing we can we can see multiple ways of uh we can see multiple ways of filling missing values okay can you speak bit slow sure i will try to speak bit slow okay so let me take one of these examples let's let's take this example suppose you have a list like this dog pencil fence dog apple and so on we have a list of these items using a dictionary compute the number of times each word occurs okay so basically let me copy this question and let me try to help you in solving this so i'll open this notebook i'll create a new notebook to which i will paste this and let me create a new set okay so uh, if you understand the question what the question expects is we need a dictionary so where the key will be one of these values okay so i have a key called as dog and the value will be how many times dog has appeared so in this case dog has appeared 1 2 3 4 5 5 times so what i expect is let me just 
put the expectation. I expect something like this. Dog, five. Okay. Pencil. How many times pencil? So we have one, two, two times pencil. Two. Fence. Maybe one. Okay. So you get the point. This is the kind of answer that we are expecting from our code. Okay. Now, of course, we will, we, we will not be filling this manually. You will have to write a code for doing this. So let's try attempting this problem. The first thing I would want to do is I would want to know how many unique items that I will need. Okay. How many unique items are there that will decide uh, the key values in my, the keys in my dictionary. Can you tell me how can I quickly find out the unique elements here? Excellent. So we will do that using a set. Let me first create this list. So we'll start with list is equal to, we'll take the same, copy this as it is. So that's our list. We'll convert that into maybe list unique is equal to list of set of L. And I can quickly see what list unique looks like by writing this command. So when I execute, I can see, okay. Out of this, we have pear, apple, dog, pencil, fence. Excellent. So we have the, we have the set of unique elements. Now I would want to count how many times we have each of these elements. So one way of doing that is for each of these items, I will run a loop. So I can say for, or maybe let me start creating an empty dictionary first. So I'll say D is equal to full. So that creates an empty dictionary and for for object or object is a keyword. Let me use something else for item is a keyword for, for let me say I'm lacking a good variable name. So let me just put word. Okay. For word in L unique. So what this will do, it will run a loop for each of these words. Okay. Then what I will do is if, so let's say for the first place, if D of pair exists, okay, then I will add one to it. And if D of pair does not exist, then okay. For each word, I have to run through this list again, right? So I have to write one more line for, let's say for, for X in L. So for each of the, each of these loops outside, I will run for this. Hmm. I guess an easier approach would be just writing one loop for word in L. Okay. So for word in L, we will get the first word dog. Now we are interested to see if dog exists within the dictionary. So I can do D dot get dog. And if I execute this, I can see D is not defined. Let me start with D. If I say D is equal to a dictionary and I execute this. So, I don't get a return value. Hmm. So let me do dot. And what are the options we have? I have get. Okay. And within get, I can get key and default is none. Okay. So let me say a key of dog and default as zero. So when I execute this, it says key get takes no keyword arguments. Let me see that again. So we have key default. It does, right? Return the value of key if key is in dictionary. Else default. Okay. And I'm getting an error on this. Let me try this value. So if I if I actually have dog with the value five and I execute this. Hmm. Ah, okay. And let me put zero. Okay, great. So if dog exists in the list, it returns to me this value. Let me try to check for pair. If pair does not exist, I get the value zero. So great. Now we have a way of, uh, of, of extracting the value without getting an error, right? So let me do this here. I can say for word in this, if, okay. 
So let's say we get the first word dog. Okay. If d dot get word zero. Okay. If this is equal to zero, basically what it means is that either that this list item does not exist within the dictionary or it has a value of zero. Okay. If this is true, then we will say that d and within d we can say word is equal to one. Okay, that means the first time that we are populating, it will create this uh, item into the dictionary and write the value. One. Else, so if we are not getting a zero, that means we are getting a value, then we can simply say d word plus equal to, so that value is plus equal to this thing. Okay, so we will get the value and add it to this one. Okay, no, we have to do plus one, sorry. So that means that this already has some value and we are adding a plus one to it because we, we experienced it here. After running this loop, we can write print of D and hopefully we should get our answer. So let me try and execute this. Okay, excellent. So when we execute this, we see that there are five examples of doc two examples of pencil, one example of fence, one apple and three pair. Okay. So uh, th the reason I was talking loudly when I was writing the code is also to give you a hint of how I will attempt this problem. Okay. So let me, let me state the things I did to attempt this problem. Okay. First, looking at the question, I tried to understand what is the expected output. Okay. So that is a very important step. Many programmers or many beginning pro beginner programmers would just take a problem and start programming without understanding what is the end result. Okay. So uh, to be different, to be more smart or to, to learn from what people have done from years of experience, try to get a good understanding of what is the output. If you can formulate the output, it is very good. So write some piece of example of what the output you expect. So once I wrote this, I got a clearer idea of what is expected out of me. Then we said, okay, how can I break this problem into smaller parts? So first I would, I would want to know, in fact, see here, this, now that I see this, uh, L unique list set item is not really important. We did not use it anywhere. Right? So let me delete it off. But that could have been one approach. The first thing that came into my mind is how many items would be there in this list. And thus we looked at set. So a failed approach, no problem. We deleted it off. Then I know that I want to run a loop. So you see, I started off with two loops and just thinking what I would do next helped me to understand that the second loop was not actually necessary. We could have get, we could have done the task from just the first loop itself. So now we have just one loop. Then I wanted to see the get function. I had some idea what this function does, but I did not exactly know. So I wrote a small piece of test code to verify how this code is working. So I populated a dictionary. I actually started with an empty dictionary. Initially, this code was giving me some error because I was writing a default value. And now I can see that I don't really need to write the default key. Maybe I was writing a spelling mistake. I don't know what, but if I just put the second instance as zero, it returns to me a zero when the, when the key does not exist. If the key exists, it will return to me its value. I try to populate I try to create a sample dictionary and try to fetch two different values from it for dog and pair. Once I got confirmed what it is returning, now I can go back to my main code. So here I write an if condition that is if I get a return value of zero, then I will just create that item in the dictionary and, and start its value with one. And if I don't get a zero, I don't get a zero means the, the, the dictionary already contains a previous value to that previous value. I will just increment by one. Okay. I hope this simple example uh, gives you some idea uh, uh, in terms of how we can solve problems like this and also the thought process that goes behind it. Okay. So you can go to uh, the folder and you've got multiple examples like this. You can try all of them out. In fact, I also have the answer. Maybe I will uh, give me a few days and then I will post the answer because I know as soon as you get the answer, there is a normal inclination of people uh, to not 
try themselves, but to quickly look at the answer. So just to avoid that temptation, you could try solving it yourself first. And then in a few days time, I will upload the assignment. I, I will give you the, the answers as well. Once you have the answers, then you can verify how good or bad you are doing. Okay. So the more you practice, the more you will get uh, uh, better at programming. I hope this was very useful. In tomorrow's class, we will continue with where we left out with data visualization, uh, which is very interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, then I will stop sharing my screen. Nijamam, I will exit now. Is that okay? Okay, so you can leave. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.